Alright, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to be looking at creating a unit spawner. I've loaded up my own tower defense here to demo approximately what we're going to create. Even if you know how to create a unit spawner, you might still want to watch all the parts of this tutorial because I'm going to go through some more advanced topics of creating triggers which can help you immensely later on. Uh, in particular, we're going to go through actions, creating our own actions and custom functions and way to thread them and so on. It's going to be a bit more complex than my usual tutorial. So let's start a map here. Um, I'll save creating UIs for another tutorial. Um, for now, let's just focus on the unit spawner. And it's like this UI here, I'm going to release once I'm done with it. It's a neat sidebar you can implement in any map. So here you'll see the unit spawning, and each unit has uh, buffs placed on them. And you can see the level list that there are waves with multiple units coming, and special buffs for just that wave. These are difficulty buffs, so I could open a difficulty right now, and I could change it to be very slow units. And uh, yeah, it gave me more bounty. Hit save. And these units that are already spawned will not change, but uh, for once the next wave spawn, you'll see that they are slower and they have minus armor. Here we have a speed down, armor decrease, so it's minus two and they're very, very slow. Anyway, let's go to the editor and create a new map and make something. Right, so here we are in the editor. Uh, this is going to be a part, pretty long tutorial, so it's probably going to be at least two or three parts. Uh, but please try to watch them all, and hopefully you'll get a better understanding of this. Uh, what I've done is I've created a visibility revealer for player one. In the trigger, I removed the melee triggers, and then I created this little pot here, and I created a spawn region and a finish region. So what I'm going to do here is basically create this start basis for a tower defense spawner, but of course you could use it as whatever suits your needs. Um, so let's start working. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new folder and call it spawner here. I like organizing my things in the folders because it looks a hell of a lot prettier once you have a lot of triggers. So I'm going to add another folder. If you have a folder selected and hit Control w you will add another folder. Functions, and one more, variables. Then I'm just going to move these into the spawner. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got to set up some variables. Um, we're going to need to store the data about what units we're going to spawn, and uh, what wave we are currently spawning, what modifications we should apply to the units, and so on. So let's start with the logic ones. So we'll just name them spawner, uh, waves, unit type. I like doing this colon stuff. So it's just a personal preference. Name them how you want. But I advise you to start all your variable names with a common name for the um, the part of your map that you're working on. Because later on you might have camera settings, you might have spawners, you might have difficulty settings, you will have other things in your map, and if you're going to browse to the variable list and try to find something, it's a lot easier to do when you... Actually, let's just talk about organization first. I'm going to open my own map here. And as you can see, my map is quite massive with a lot of triggers. And each of these folders have... Uh, there's a scoreboard and so on. And if I try to want to do a, say, a variable compare or something, uh, let's just go to a trigger. It's, it's going to be, it would be hell for me to find variables unless I name them properly. Here you can see each of them sp starts with something I find logical for whatever they're a part of. This way I can find my variables a lot easier. So do try to keep a system in your map, else you will find that your map becomes unmaintainable after a while. Even for you, it will get a mess and it will be a lot harder to develop. 
Now with that out of the way, let's go back here. Uh, this is obviously going to be a unit type. And it has to be an array since we're going to have uh, multiple levels. So I'm just going to have 10 levels and a maximum of five different units per level. So this first one here will then be the amount of levels you can have. Actually, let's just set it to 100. So you can add 100 levels with five different units per level. Now I'm going to add another one, spawner waves unit uh, wave modification. For this tutorial, I'm just going to implement a simple um, uh, wave modification uh, to the entire wave. You could implement for each unit in the wave. For instance, in my own map, I have another array for wave modifications where I use 100, 5, and then another 10 or so, so I can have 10 modifications per unit in each wave. But for this one, we're just going to add a single modification to each wave, or up to five modifications to each wave. Um, we're going to, this is going to be a game link, and behavior, since we use behaviors to add modifications. So we have unit type and modification we can store right now. Uh, we're going to need some, few more variables. Uh, spawner, waves, total waves. I'm just going to start this one at zero. And then I'm going to add spawner, waves, temp, wave, number. Also going to be zero. And yeah, let's just start here. This is the easiest way to make a spawner script, is to just add things on as you go. If you code it properly, it's very easy to add more on. So, what we're going to do first is fill these variables with unit types and wave modifications. Um, most people would just make a trigger, like so, and then init waves, and then they will just start adding set variable, and then they will set the first in the wave, the first unit and the first modification and blah 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 for each wave and they would have just a huge trigger here with the arrays, working in arrays and I find that a bit ugly and it's a bit of a pain in the arse to maintain. So you're gonna have to do some kind of init waves anyway but we can do it, make it our lives a bit easier. What we will do is we're gonna create a new action definition and we're gonna call it spawner um, waves, add wave, all right, so hint text, try to fill in the hint text, it makes your life easier later on, create a new wave, there we go, all this script is going to do, it's going to set variable, total waves, I'm <coughs> sorry, I have a bit of a cold right now, so I might be coughing a bit. And we're going to set um, total waves plus one. And then we're going to set another variable. We're going to set the temp wave, so we know which wave we're currently on. Value to um, the value of total waves. Uh, you can do this in different ways, but I like to have the tracking here inside the spawning system. I think that makes more sense to track it here. Um, you could make it so that you can add units to any wave at any point, and add a modification to any wave at any point, as you wish, but I prefer to do it this way. So now we can add waves. We need, it's not very useful in self, we need to add units to the waves, so I'm just going to make another action here. Oh, it defaults to function, actually, when you press W. So I'm just going to go here, and uh, new action definition. Spawner waves, add unit to wave. And All right. So we're going to need some parameters for this one. We're going to need to t 